All stands ready, Lord Commander. Ah, the moment has come then. Pray excuse my lateness. I paid a brief visit to the workshop to inquire about the mana cutters. The engineers assure me that they're ready. The area is now but a short flight away. Yet what a long and winding path we took to reach this point. Were it not for Master Alphano's proposal, we never would have attempted to parlay with the dragons. Though our negotiations yielded little, our expedition with Lady Isa taught us much. You took an unimaginable risk. I could scarce believe the tale Astinian told. Aye. Tis true that many of our countrymen would sooner die than join hands with the heretic's mistress. But twas through that most unlikely of alliances that we came to speak with Reisvelger. A conversation that went rather poorly, as I recall. In this instance, the journey was more important than the destination. Had we not slain Nidhogg's consort, Tiamun, and put the Great Worm on his guard, the Dravanians would have arrived at Ishgard's walls long ago. Aye, that they would. Full grateful am I for every hour of respite your actions have afforded us. Thanks to you, our defenses are much improved. Tis but a pity they won't be enough. Thus you believe an assault upon the area represents the city's best chance of survival. Is that not so, Astinian? I am under no illusions. Nidhogg's might is legendary. But with his eye in my possession, I can stifle his strength at the source. Victory will be hard won, even so. And I shall be glad indeed to have the Warrior of Light at my side. You shall have my blade as well. There are more of these mana cutters to be had, yes? Lord Commander, no! How can I, a proud knight of Ishgard, stand by and do naught while an outsider risks life and limb for our homeland? I swore an oath to protect this city. Pray leave the slaying of dragons to dragoons, Sir Knight. Your duty to command the city's defense is no less vital. Should we fail, and Nidhogg slip through our grasp, who then will hold the walls against him? Will you leave Ishgard in the hands of the Holy See Zealots? There are others. Who but you has the authority and the standing to orchestrate a city-wide defense? I do not, and neither does the Warrior of Light. That is why it is our place to fight, and yours to remain here, Lord Commander. What? You too, Master Alfino. By the fury. You have shown some promise, but this adversary is far beyond your skills. Your candor is appreciated, Sir Dragoon. I shall remain then and cheer you from afar. Well, my friend, it would seem I have discouraged the last of the volunteers and claim the task as ours alone. But if any alive can best this worm, tis surely we too.
This ends here! Gifted my people a thousand years of suffering. Now I gift you an eternity in darkness. They are ours, Lord Eldrath. The eyes of Nidhogg. Aye. The worm lies broken and my father is avenged. With the wellspring of his vitality thus denied him, Nidhogg shall not linger long in this world. But behold the terrible price we have paid. My sire is dead. So many brother knights slain. We traded our honor for the strength which now courses in our veins. And still we are forced to make such sacrifice. But not in vain, my lord. Trace Felger is the only great worm left in Dravania, and he dares not leave his lair. With Nidhogg's eyes in your possession, who now can challenge the might of Ishgard, ascend the throne, and take your rightful place as the ruler of our people? Nay, my friend. I must forsake the mantle of king. Though Nidhogg be defeated, his wormling horde yet darkens the skies with wings beyond counting. As one who partook of Ratatoska's strength, it shall be my penance to bear a knight's arms until death grants me leave to retire. When that day comes, no prince shall perish, but a hell's bound hunter of dragons. But Lord Haldreth, what then shall become of the royal line? Think of your people, my lord. Without a king, who will the common man turn to in his hour of need? How will he find his way without your benevolent hand to guide him? I thank you, Sir Flavian and Sir Silvertrill, 
for dispelling my remaining doubts. With men of such wisdom and compassion in service to the realm, it is plain that Ishgard has no need of a king. But if you must bow to the demands of tradition, you need look no further than yourselves for one worthy to wear the crown. Fare thee well, my brother knights, my loyal friends. On these shoulders shall I bear the weight of my father's sins. With this lance shall I repay the debt accrued through our misdeeds. What cruel jest has fate played upon us? Have we seized this desperate victory only to lose a king? We can but act as our lord has bid. We few who remain must divide between us the rulership of Ishgard and her people. Not I. My oath was to Lord Haldrath and he alone. If he is not to be king, then I would hang up my shield as well. Will you abandon us too, sir? I would wash my hands of blood and betrayal and take up an honest trade. Mayhap I shall serve ale instead of sharpened steel. Four, then. Fortong, Hylanart, Dirinder, and Zemile. But four houses to rule all of Ishgard. And what of the throne? We keep it empty. Until the day a king rises once more. We must assume the role of stewards. We shall shape our nation anew with a history of our own making, and let the truth of this dark day die here, upon the battlefield. you, friend. Are you wounded? You have borne witness to history. To the culmination of the first battle with Nidhogg. The legend of Ishgard's founding tells that our ancestors were led to the land of Kurthus by the valiant King Thordon. In the midst of their journey, they came to a wide chasm where they were set upon by a great worm, Nidhogg. A furious battle then ensued, with Thordon leading the van. Though the brave king was slain defending his people, his son, Haldrath, the first Azure Dragoon, fought on undaunted. And with a mighty thrust of his lance, he gouged out Nidhogg's eye forcing the wicked creature into retreat. Thus, did this eldritch orb become a sacred treasure of Ishgard, lending its power to every knight deemed worthy to bear the title of Azure Dragoon. A rousing tale, is it not? Would that I could still believe it. But your vision, which we must accept as immutable truth, leaves no room for doubt. Save on one point. If Haldrath took both of Nidhogg's eyes, 
Then how came this eye to be lodged in the worm's skull? Beneath every answer we unearth, another question lies buried. It was a fierce battle, but one I knew we would win. Your fame is well deserved, Warrior of Light. Full proud am I to have fought at your side. I would fain return with all swiftness to Ishgard to inform the Lord Commander of our triumph. But we must first have words with Hreisvelger. There are parts of this tale that the Worm has kept from us, and I would know wherefore.
You mean the moment I prized your eye from his head? Has he or lay to or make as set music and as and strong of an? It was yours! Your strength that sustained Nidhogg all these years! Would that Haldreth had dealt the worm a killing blow. Acquiesced. You surrendered your eye to Nidhogg, knowing full well the suffering he would inflict! 
this It was my life's goal to slay Nidhogg. But I find there is little joy to be had in its accomplishment. But you have rid the world of a hate-filled creature, and ended a bloody war in so doing. I lost my family to Nidhogg's flames, and was with fury in my heart that I took up the lance. Every blow I struck, I struck in the name of vengeance. We were not so different, he and I. I will not judge you for your deeds. I have not the right. Too many innocents have perished in the name of my greater good. Yet even with all that has passed, the tale is incomplete. We are short a great worm's eye. Of the pair which Haldrith took from Nidhogg, only one is known to us, the one I bear. What then became of the other? Why did Nidhogg, who had taken such pains to prolong the Dragonsong War, suddenly decide to hurl his entire army against the walls of Ishgard? Lord Commander. Aye. The deed is done. Nidhogg is slain. What? In the city? A battle with whom? At once, Lord Commander. Hold firm till our return. Fighting has broken out in the city. Lord Emmerich was sparse with the particulars, but it seems some commoners threw open the gates to a force of heretics. I gave no order to attack. Are we to mark the end of the Dragonsong War by spilling the blood of our own? Mayhap Praisvogel was right about us. Let us away, warrior of light. The people must be saved from themselves. Wait! I would join you! There has been enough violence! I will appeal to my people in the city and make them see reason. Come then, Lady Iceheart. Let us write the final chapter in this damnable war.
A small army of heretics has invaded the city, Your Eminence. But there is no cause for concern. A sizable contingent of our soldiers is already in place to repel the Dravanian assault. And the intruders will soon find themselves outnumbered and outmatched. Our plans proceed apace, then? Yes, Your Eminence. This unrest shall serve to feed the people's fear of the heretics and the dragons both. And lend renewed fervor to their prayers for deliverance. Very good. Grant our guests what time they need to sow a measure of chaos, then order the Temple Knights to crush them. Your will be done. The moment is at hand. Excellent. All shall soon be in alignment. It is time for the bringer of light to die. Bloodshed! My lady! She is come! No. 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 Hear me, brothers and sisters! The war is ended! Nidhogg is no more! It is so! This adventurer and the Azure Dragoon laid the Great Worm low! <clears throat> the endless cycle of violence between man and dragon was born of our forefathers' treachery. You have followed me, bled with me, to bring this truth to light that we might all know peace. But Nidhogg is dead. Nidhogg is dead, my friends. He who bore such hatred towards Ishgard is dead. Let his hatred die with him, I say. Let us sheathe our swords and go in peace. Have we lost? No, my friend. Far from it. At long last, the peace for which we have so desperately fought is within our grasp. And I, for one, would not forsake it. Peace? Seize the witch! Let none escape! Providing aid and succor to the wounded should be our first concern. If the heretics mean to observe the peace, then it would be folly not to do the same.
praise Halone, you are safe. My safety was never in doubt, Father. For I had the Azure Dragoon and the Warrior of Light by my side. We bring the most wonderful tidings. The infamous Lady Iceheart, here in Ishgard? This is most unexpected. She has done much to quell the violence. The Inquisition may not approve, but we are glad of her presence. And with the Great Worm's demise, even our nation's more reactionary elements will have scant grounds to press for her immediate impeachment. My thoughts exactly. What of the truth revealed to us by Hreisvelger? That the origins of the Dragonsong War, a core tenet of Vishgardian faith, are quite unlike those depicted in the scriptures. That men and dragons once lived together in harmony, and that it was man's treachery which shattered the peace and plunged our peoples into war. The same scripture also describes the origins of the High Houses. Were it exposed as false, the legitimacy of our rule would be called into question. If both Highborn and Lowborn can trace their ancestry to Thorden and his Knights Twelve. But a single sip of Dragon's Blood is required to confirm their lineage. If the Holy See knew of this and chose to remain silent, their crimes are grievous indeed. Regardless, this state of affairs cannot be allowed to continue. Sir Emmerich, you cannot mean to raise this matter with the Archbishop. Pray consider what you are proposing. If the Holy See chose to conceal the truth for centuries, what reason would they have to reveal it now? At best, you will be branded a heretic and clapped in irons. Then at least the Archbishop will have shown his true colors. My friends, this war will never truly be at an end until the truth is made known. You must see what lies on the horizon if it is not. When ruled by fear of a common enemy, we were united. But now we have none. During the war, the highborn needed men to lead and the lowborn men to follow. Not anymore. Tis but a matter of time before the old order is called into question. Lady Iceheart will share the truth with her followers, and the Holy See will be powerless to stop its spread. The disenfranchised will rise up united, and blood will flow in the streets once more. A divided Ishgard will not survive. Tread carefully, Lord Commander. My lady, is it wise to let him go? I sympathize with the Lord Commander's desire for reform, but to approach the Archbishop in this manner bespeaks an idealism to which I did not think Sir Emmerich prone. Though he comports himself as a realist, he has long dreamt of reform. It was that idealism which first drew me to him, that which made me swear an oath to serve. We must not think of ways to hinder his cause, but rather ways to aid it. Even should the Holy See cry heresy. You cannot mean. If the Lord Commander does not return from the vault at the appointed hour, I mean to go and fetch him. Have care, my lady. Your words border on treason. Should they reach the wrong ears, you will be declared an enemy of Ishgard. That is a risk I am willing to take. Lest you forget, my lord, I am not born of this land. My loyalty is to the Lord Commander alone. But I speak only of what may come to pass. If the rumors regarding his heritage are to be believed, we have naught to fear. Hmm. 
lies and slander. Forgive me, what rumors are these? That Sir Emmerich is the Archbishop's bastard son. Senior clergy are not permitted to marry and sire children. But even the holiest among us are not immune to temptation. I labor to believe it. Sir Emmerich is truly the Archbishop's son. He has never been publicly acknowledged as such. But the rumors have plagued him since childhood. That he rose to his current position, despite being despised as a bastard and accused of profiting from his father's influence, bespeaks the quality of his character. It is my hope that on this occasion, the burden of his birth will work in his favor. Should our worst fears be realized, the Archbishop will not be so quick to execute his own flesh and blood, affording us time to mount a rescue. Bastard or trueborn, he is our nation's best hope. If the Holy See dares to threaten him, I shall lead the charge against the Vault myself. Hear, hear! The future of Ishgard rests on Sir Emmerich's shoulders. I too will do mine utmost to aid his cause. Orshafon, be reasonable. A knight lives to serve, Father. To aid those in need. The people need Sir Emmerich more than ever, and we may be his only hope. There is no greater calling for a knight than to save the life of his fellow man. I swear to you, on the sigil of our house, that I shall do this and make you proud. Even you? <laughs> Romantic, reckless fools the lot of you. So be it. Make your preparations. I thank you all for your support. Thank you. 